Good morning, and welcome to worship at Westminster Presbyterian Church on this Communion Sunday. A special welcome is extended to our guests and visitors, whether you are worshiping with us online from home or in the sanctuary. Those present are invited to complete the French Ritual of Friendship folder during the offertory and join us in the West Narthex for refreshments and fellowship following worship. Children in pre-kindergarten through grade two are invited to summer Sunday school with Mrs. Sherrick following the children's sermon. Letters inviting children and youth to the blessing of the backpacks on Sunday, August 21st, and the children and youth swim party also on the 21st were mailed this week along with information about the upcoming programs in the new ministry year. We have one more week to collect backpacks for the Contact Ministries Back to School event. We are halfway there with our goal of 200 as we counted 101 backpacks on Friday. If you are considering making a donation, please do so this week. Elizabeth Serco will meet next Sunday immediately following worship to place Bible verse tags on each of the backpacks. Today's Adult Education Forum will be a journey to the Sherrick Farm to see the beauty of the prairie fields restored by Dr. Sherrick and his family over these past 20 years. Over 30 members have signed up and we will gather on the sidewalk of the north side of the sanctuary immediately following worship to coordinate the carpools. Thank you to the 23 day laborers who pick corn at the Grisby Farm for local food pantries this past Wednesday, and to Harold Hale and Christy Pound who distributed the corn on Thursday. Reverend Choi and I met with the Compass for Kids leadership team this week to prepare for another meaningful year of mentoring students at the Graham Elementary School. And the Mission and Community Service Committee received word this past week that the refugee family we are supporting in partnership with the Northminster Presbyterian Church in Evanston, Illinois, through Refugee One, is arriving this week from Miramar in Southeast Asia. Please keep the family in your prayers. Highlights this week include the completion of the porch project on Edward Street, which began during the Steadfast Neighbor Week, uh, and some masonry work. The carpentry work will be completed Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday by a team of three. The knitters will have lunch at Sue Cole's home on Tuesday. Summer choir will rehearse on Thursday and DMA will gather on Friday. Please take a moment to nominate a friend to be a church officer in our next class of leadership. And we welcome guest organist again this Sunday, Dr. Jamie Greenwald. And now, let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship God.
Faith is the assurance of things hoped for. Happy are those who trust in the Lord. Let us worship the Holy One in our Friends, to come before God with the truth of our lives is itself an act of faith. We trust that the Holy One is interested in us, interested in our minds and the hearts and our souls. We trust that God's mercy and grace are intended for us too. With faith and in trust, let us make our confession to God first in one voice followed by the silent prayers of our hearts. Let us pray. Holy God, you call us to the good, seek justice, and care for those in need. Yet how often we place our own comforts above compassion for others. You call us to hope in what we do not see, to wait and to watch for you, but we lose sight and become self-absorbed. Forgive us, increase our hope, enlarge our hearts, and keep us alert to the wonders you work in the world every day. Hear now our heavenly prayers of compassion.
Friends, what a joy it is to celebrate this part of worship where we gather all our young people uh, today. And a little shot to the back. Where is he? Yes, which is really nice. All right. Friends, we'll, con we'll continue our worship by sharing a scripture from the God's love. We're going in God's love with you today. But before I do that, I have a couple of questions. And because they are really hard questions, I have prices. Can you know the answer to the price? Is it okay? All right. Okay, it's the same prices for everybody, so don't worry. Okay. So ready? Here are a few questions that I have written. Okay. All right. Here we go. This the answer of all food, by the way. Okay. So everybody knows the catch of food. One has many ears but cannot hear. One has many ears but cannot hear. And the, the hint is there were a lot of people that went out on Wednesday to get these. Yes, we went to get fish. Bread? <laughs> oh, you make bread out of them. It's yellow and has about this big, and you eat it like mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and take it through. Yes? Corn! There we go! Alright! So you get one of these. Okay? Yeah! Chalk! Very fun, right? Here we go. Alright, here's another one. Okay? You can cut me, slice me, dice me, and all the while you cry. What am I? Yes, an onion. Very, very good. So I'll give you, I'll give you one too. Here, there's a child for you. Okay. Now I'm gonna start asking you a harder question. Okay. Ready? Okay. How many eggs would a rooster lay over three weeks, provided it is absolutely fat and house? <laughs> what? No. How many eggs would a rooster lay over three weeks, <laughs> provided it is absolutely fat and house? <laughs> Correct. I said, is a rooster a boy? <laughs> No, that is correct. Uh, we get one. All right. Here we go. I'm going to start giving away that. Okay. Denver, how old are you? Three. Very right good. You get one. <laughs> Where are you from, Denver? Hurry. Well, where are you from, Denver? There you go. You get one. All right. What color is your eyes? What color are they? Blue! <laughs> you get one? 
One, one plus one. Two. You get one. Can you, 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 you get one to me and Come on. Now, was this fair for everybody to get? Was it the same questions? Was it fair for everybody? Yeah, right? See, there were some hard questions and there were some easy questions, but people received the same gift, right? Today's passage comes from a parable that's called right here, let me move it up, okay? A generous landowner. And this generous landowner did exactly the same. A people who came to work at 9 o'clock and people who came to work at 3 o'clock got the same price. And did you know that God's love for you is always the same? It doesn't matter when you call out to God, you will receive the same gift of love from God that you have all received in talk. Now, promise me one thing, though. No one will be running the wall in the church. <laughs> <laughs> or now I have to answer them, okay? Because I need to you all. All right. Would you all pray with me? Okay? Let's pray together. Holy God, your love for us is so genuine and uh, so real and fair. Even though we might see it as unfair and the first become last and last shall be first, we still do not understand the way. But you are God who just cares for us and loves us and wants to shower us with your love. So may we, may we do the same with all the people that we see. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, would you all rise with me and sing our responsive song? Let's follow with the share, okay? Friends, in our first reading, which comes from Isaiah chapter 1 and then verses 1 and verses 10 through 17, we recognize a common theme among the ancient prophets of Israel. Isaiah echoes the message that worship is an idle exercise unless it brings about a changed heart in a worshiper. Such, such worship is a waste of time for those who participate, and more importantly, it is a waste of God's time. However, worship as it was meant to be changes hearts and inspires men and women to acts of faith characterized by the justice and compassion of the one we worship. Hear now God's holy word. The vision of Isaiah, son of Amaz, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, king of Judah. Hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom, Listen to the teachings of your God, your people of Gomorrah. What to me is the multitude of your sacrifices, says the Lord? I have had enough of burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fat beasts. I do not delight in the blood of bulls or of lambs or of goats. When you come to appear before me, who asked this from your hand? Trample my courts no more. 
bring offerings is futile. Incense is an abomination to me. New moon and Sabbath and calling of convocation, I cannot endure solemn assemblies with iniquity. Your new moons and your appointed festivals, my soul hates. They have become a burden to me. I am weary of bearing them. When you stretch out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you make many prayers, I will not listen. Your hands are full of blood. Wash yourselves. Make yourselves clean. Remove the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Rescue the oppressed. Defend the orphan. Plead for the widow. Amen. Our second scripture reading is from the well-known and beloved reflection on faith in Hebrews 11. In this chapter, the author of Hebrews, probably a student of the Apostle Paul, encourages the followers of Christ in the life of faith by sharing stories from the Hebrew scriptures. Hear now what the Spirit is saying. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith, our ancestors received approval. By faith, we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance, and he set out not knowing where he was going. By faith, Abraham stayed for a time in the land he had been promised as in a foreign land, living in tents as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with Abraham of the same promise. For Abraham looked forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, Abraham received power to procreate, even though he was too old, and Sarah herself was barren, because Abraham considered God faithful, who had promised. Therefore, from one person, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born, as many as the stars of heaven, and as innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. All of these died in faith without having received the promises, but from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth. For people who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they had left behind, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, God has prepared a city for them. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The title of the meditation, 
hope in the unseen. The text, now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Let us pray. Holy and loving God, give us the conviction of things we cannot see and the assurance of the places you call us to that we do not yet know. Amen. Scholars say the title to the Hebrews is not a part of the original manuscript. The author of this early Christian letter does not waste time on salutations, but seeks to inspire, motivate, encourage, and theologically counsel a community experiencing persecution and quite possibly the abandonment of faith. The author of Hebrews wants to provide a word of clarity, a word of strength, a word of consolation, and a word of hope. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things we cannot see. By faith we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. In other words, according to the Reverend Liz Meyer Bolton, a Disciples of Christ pastor, though the news around us may be full of shadows, though the evidence does not look good, we can and must believe, for our faith is not evidential in the conventional way, it's based on more than one kind of news, the signs of the times around us, yes, but also and preeminently on the good news of the Christian gospel. We have a God who brings good out of evil and life out of death. This is who God is. And this is what our hope is based upon in a complicated and unjust world. We have a God who is totally for us. No matter how barren we feel, like Sarah, new birth is possible. No matter how bleak the world may look, new life is possible. For us, new life is possible through faith, through trust, through believing the promises of God, despite what we see. Faith involves trust and tenacity. Faith and hope are one, and life is a pilgrimage. Abraham and Sarah did not know where they were going, yet they faithfully set out on a journey. Sometimes we forget about the element of risk that is involved in having faith. When our religion becomes something we take for granted, when it becomes too predictable, or something about which we are so sure, when it becomes self-centered and no longer inspires us to pursue fresh acts of justice and compassion, as the prophet Isaiah reminds us, then we have lost our understanding of what it means to have faith. The very nature of faith consists of an element of uncertainty with a willingness to participate wholeheartedly on the journey into places that are unfamiliar to which we have been called. 
the title of this meditation, Hope in the Unseen, is a misquote of Hebrews 11.1, 1, found in Ron Suskin's book about the journey of Cedric Johnson, an honor student from an inner city high school in Washington, D.C., to Brown University. I received the book from a dear friend and brilliant educator in St. Louis, Judy Rubenstein, and I passed it on to a Brown University graduate, cardiologist, and mother of one of Paul's best friends, Alosha, who was willing to risk an uncertain journey to Russia with her husband and brought home two beautiful children whom they faithfully raised as their own. The book affirms the faith of the great cloud of witnesses that made Cedric's unexpected sojourn possible, his devoted mother, his resilient youth pastor, his generous benefactor, and his dedicated tutor. And what Cedric learned about himself and his faith as he traveled to a place of challenge and transformation. As Cedric reaches beyond himself and is stretched emotionally, socially, and intellectually in the expectations before him, he discovers that the substance of his faith, a hope in the unseen, is not so much a place he could not yet see up ahead where he would be welcomed and accepted for who he was. Cedric comes to realize that the hope in the unseen is within himself, a place in his heart, and grows out of the important work of honest reflection, prayer, insight, and self-realization. Perhaps this is what the author of Hebrews wants us to know about faith. Faith is not simply belief that there is a God. Faith is trusting the God in whom we believe, the God who is more concerned with our acts of justice and compassion than burnt offerings. Because Sarah and Abraham trusted that their future belonged to God, they could risk in faith. Together, they ventured into a hope in the unseen, looking for the promised homeland where they would be welcomed and accepted. During their sojourn, they came to realize that the place they could not yet see up ahead, the welcome and acceptance they were looking for was within a place in their hearts, hearts which are large enough to live lives of compassion and justice, to hope in the unborn, and to travel the unseen journey before them. as we travel our individual journeys, may we delight in the God who understands the risk of faith, the God who sojourned with us in Christ Jesus, and the God who calls us to acts of justice and compassion. May we have the courage 
to embrace the unfamiliar and to discover hope in the unseen places within our hearts. By the grace of God, may it be so. Amen. Friends, at this time, let us continue our worship by offering our tithes and ourselves as we join in the ministry of Westminster to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk, the, walk humbly with God. Let us come together and let us pray. Holy God, as we give our offerings and dedicate our lives to you, 
may use the gifts that are being given and the hearts that we have within ourselves to bring hope into this world and to show the love and the, and the kindness that you have for all of us. Amen. the table has been set all who profess faith in Christ have a place at the table and are welcome to partake as we join together in the great prayer of Thanksgiving we remember the following in our prayers hospitalized at Memorial are Donald Funk and Linda Dillard discharged from Memorial to Concordia Reach is Edith Irwin Recovering at Lewis Memorial is Reverend John Glosser, and discharged from the bridge is Eggie Harmon. The prayers and sympathy of the congregation are extended to Elizabeth and Mark Luttrell on the death of Mark's father, Ellen W. Luttrell, on August 2nd. We celebrate the wedding of Amanda Ar Ormande and Eli Brower who were uh, united in marriage on August 6th in Arroyo Grande, California. Eli is the son of Kathy and Scott Brown. And also we celebrate the milestone birthdays and anniversaries. Dr. and Mrs. James and Mary Ann Singleton celebrate 69 years of marriage on August 8th. Betty Caldwalder, celebrates her 97th birthday on August 9th. Elle Hibbert 
celebrates his 92nd birthday on August 11th. Sharon and Matt Gilmore celebrates 61 years of marriage on August 12th. The flowers in the chancel are given in loving memory of Heather Hewitt and in honor of her birthday by Eleanor and Lyle Van Deventer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, Creator God. At your word, the earth was made and spun on its course among the planets. Christ died that we might have and is risen so that we raised us to a new life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with choirs of angels and with all of the faithful of every time and place who forever sing to the glory of your name. You are holy, O God of majesty. Accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving as a living and holy offering of ourselves, that our lives may proclaim the one crucified and risen. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon thee your gift of bread and wine, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be for the communion of the body and blood of Christ. As this bread is Christ's body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. Hear now the prayer of Christ taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Hear the words of the institution of the Holy Supper of our Lord Jesus that the night before he died, he took bread. And after giving thanks, he broke it and said, take and eat, this is my body broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And then pouring into the cup, he said, this cup is the new covenant of my blood shed for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink it, remember me. For every time you eat this bread and drink from this cup, you proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord until he comes. The gifts of God for the people of God. You are invited to partake of the bread as you receive it and hold the cup that we may sup together as a symbol of our oneness in Christ.
let us drink to the hope in the unseen places in our hearts. Friends, please rise and join together in prayer at the communion. Let us pray. Since it is our God, in this place, at this table, we have touched, we have tasted, and we have heard the signs of your love for us. Grant that we may depart, filled with your love for you, and overflowing with your love for those we meet along the way, and with whom we share our lives. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. <laughs> And now, risking in faith, let us go out into the world in peace. Have courage, hold on to what is right. Return no one evil for evil, strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the suffering, honor everyone. And may the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the gentle strength of God's Holy Spirit sustain us and empower us to see the unseen places within our hearts. Amen. Amen.